Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you were saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters <coughs> At the same time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. That's the word of the Lord. You can have our seats. We've been looking at the resurrection, uh, and Pastor Bill uh, walked with us through uh, the same last week. And this, uh, this week, I want us to look at the resurrection, but through the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. The book of First Corinthians, or the book of Corinthians, there too, is widely accepted as historical, the, both by Christians and by people who don't believe in God. The people who don't believe in God don't think it's scripture, but they actually think or believe that the book is historical. It was written by Apostle Paul, who was a skeptic himself before he, he joined uh, the believers, before he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. In fact, he had been on the road to Damascus to go and persecute Christians who had fled to Damascus. So Paul was on his way to round them up when Jesus appeared to Paul. And as Paul is writing the letter to the Corinthians, he's addressing some issues that have been raised in the church questions that people have on different issues. And as he's writing this letter, he's um, addressing the different things that the church was struggling with. And when we come to chapter 15, he's addressing the issue of the resurrection that the people in Corinth were struggling with. They were wondering, is it true? Do people get, does this body get raised as this body or is the body even important as Pastor Bill was talking to us last week? And there were all, some of them also questioning whether Paul was a true apostle. And so Paul, when we come to chapter 15, he's giving an apologetic for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And he's also uh, proving to the Corinthians that he's actually an apostle like the Peter and the rest of them. In fact, he talks about this, uh, when he talks about the resurrection, he says that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. He was buried and was raised according to the scriptures. So Paul starts off with three proofs to show that the resurrection is real. The first proof that he gives is his own personal encounter with Jesus. Both the resurrection, the gospel is tied in. We don't have a gospel without a resurrection. So Paul is telling them that this gospel that I preached, it first happened to me. I'm the first person that it changed before I even came to preach to you, I had a personal encounter with Jesus. And then, like what I've just read, he says that this Christ died according to the scriptures. He was buried and was raised to life according to the scriptures. So he's even uh, looking back to the Old Testament. Because at that time, all they had, they didn't have uh, the Old and New Testament like we have today. They had the Old Testament. But he was going back to the scriptures in the Old Testament to tell them that this had been spoken of. And then lastly, he talks about the eyewitness accounts of many people who had seen the risen Christ, the apostles had seen him, uh, and like, he, like we've read, 500 people had seen him, some who are still alive at the time that Paul is writing to the, to the Corinthians. Paul, when he was... Uh, speaking or writing the letter to the Galatians, he had told them that 
the message that he was preaching to them, he didn't receive it from any man. God himself, Jesus himself appeared to Paul on the road to Damascus and taught him what Paul would later go and preach to other people. Paul said that what he received had been delivered to him and he was now giving it to the people of, uh, and he had preached the same message to the people of, uh, in Corinth. So the, go, the gospel account that Paul had, he didn't hear it from, even he didn't even hear it from Peter or from the other apostle. Jesus himself uh, revealed himself to Paul. In fact, uh, Galatians chapter 1 verse 18 to 20 says, then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem. Three years after he had met Jesus, he went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Cephas, who is Peter, and stayed with him 15 days. Verse 19 says, I saw none of the other apostles, only James, the Lord's brother. I assure you before God that, I am, that what I am writing to you is not a lie. And then later, Paul would go back to Jerusalem to confirm that what he has been preaching to the Gentiles, because Paul was called to preach to the Gentiles, was actually what the other apostles were preaching. In Galatians chapter 2, verse 2, Paul says, Then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem, this time with Barnabas. I took Titus along also. I went in response to a revelation and meeting privately with those esteemed as leaders. I presented to them the gospel that I preach among the Gentiles. I wanted to be sure that I was not running and had not been running my race in vain. After receiving from Jesus is when he went to confirm that the message that he was preaching was actually the same message that the apostles were preaching. Uh, Verse 4 says, he was buried, he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. The Old Testament had talked about the, the death and resurrection of Jesus. And uh, that's one of the things that makes it so believable. Because no one could have, you see, even if I, I read the Old Testament, I can't make what happened in the life of Jesus or what had been prophesied to happen in my own life? How do you get people to crucify you? How do you get people to, to do evil things to you, trying to fulfill what had been prophesied about a Messiah that would come? So all these things, even the disciples, it's only later as they looked back and remembered what was read, what they had read in the Old Testament, that's when they realized that for sure, the things that happened in the life of Jesus had been prophesied about in the Old Testament. In Psalm, Psalms 22 describes to, almost to a T the death of Jesus. Isaiah 53 describes the death of Jesus. And then when you read Hosea and you read Jonah and you read and continue reading different parts of the Psalms, you see, you, you hear this talk of the resurrection. And even if you tried to make your life fulfill scripture, how do you get yourself killed and resurrected? This resurrection had to be something that only God could have brought about. And then there was the overwhelming eyewitness accounts. It says that he appeared, Jesus appeared to 500 believers whom were still alive when Paul, was, uh, uh, when Paul now came to encounter Jesus Christ. He appeared to Peter, of course, he appeared to James, he appeared to the disciples. And later he would appear to Paul on the road to Damascus. And Bible scholars tell us that between Paul meeting the resurrected Christ and Jesus dying on the cross, it could have all happened in a period of five years. That from the time Jesus died and was resurrected to the time he's, appe he's appearing to Paul, only five years had elapsed. And so it's true that the people who had seen the resurrected Christ were still alive for the Corinthians to go and talk to them and find out if what Paul was saying was true. The evidence for the resurrection is overwhelming. Uh, the Corinthians could very easily go and find out from the people if what Paul was saying was true. But why was it important for Paul that the Corinthians believe in the resurrection? Later, as we'll see in the course of the week, the resurrection is very central to the Christian faith. But even before we get to, to that place, the people in Corinth knew about Paul. They knew what kind of life Paul had led. They knew what the gospel and the resurrection had done in Paul's life. 
His own life was a testament of the power of the gospel. Paul was well known. His story was well known. He had been a persecutor, sanctioned by the high priests to go and persecute Christians. And the, when he received Jesus, it was a public thing. When he went into Damascus, people, even the people of Damascus were like, isn't this the guy who has come here looking for Christians to arrest? But right now, Paul came into Damascus as a changed man. And then even after he left Damascus and traveled back to Jerusalem, Paul would be persecuted by the very people that he had been friends with earlier. And his life was an open book for many people to, to read. He was publicly tried, he was publicly, he preached publicly. And so his own personal life was a testament of what Christ had done to his life. And Paul reminds the Corinthians that the, that the same gospel that had changed his life is the same gospel he preached to them, and it's the same gospel that had changed their own lives. It's the same gospel that they had received and had been saved by. And he reminds them, if you look at uh, verse 2, by this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. This gospel is not... Because, you see, like at this time, the Corinthians are being confused by, by all these people who are questioning the resurrection. And Paul says that beyond just having received the gospel, you need to hold family. First of all, you have received the gospel, so you are, you're supposed to stand. And then this gospel that has saved you, you need to hold family to it. Otherwise, you will have believed in vain. And sometimes, even in, in life today, if you are not sure of what you believe, it's very easy to be shaken by winds of doctrine that come. And Paul is warning the Corinthians not to be sidetracked by people who would try to come and steal what they have received. In fact, he says, if you allow yourself to be sidetracked, then you have believed in vain. You need to persevere in the faith and believe what you have, you have received because it's the truth. The evidence is clear that what has happened is the truth. And he tells them that even his own faith is secured only by the grace of God. Salvation doesn't come by what we have done or what we haven't done. So I can't say, well, I haven't sinned, so therefore I'm saved. Oh, oh, I have sinned, therefore Jesus needed to save me. No, salvation is by grace through faith. Salvation is only by grace through faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ. And Paul is reminding the Corinthians that this, his own salvation is kept and sustained by the grace of God. He had been a terrible person, but God's grace had saved him and kept him. So salvation is not, none of us can merit salvation by what we do or what we haven't done. So Paul is reminding them that even this salvation that we're talking about is not something that you do for yourself. It's not something that you can maintain for yourself. He's saying that even though he has worked hard for the, for, for the kingdom of God, he's saying I've only worked hard because of the grace of God that has been at work in my life. So even today, Questions are thrown at us about what we believe. Christians, people that we have known as Christians for many years, are beginning to question their faith, and many have walked away publicly from the faith. And even not just quietly, they stopped believing, or they've come up, done videos of how I used to believe, now I no longer believe. The resurrection is not a human doctrine. The resurrection is not a human creation. God raised Jesus from the dead. And that is what confirms our salvation. Do you today believe that Jesus has been risen, has been raised from the dead? Have you received this gospel by faith? The gospel of grace by faith. Are you being sustained in your walk with God by the grace of God? Are you standing firm or are you being shaken by the winds, the strange winds of doctrine that are blowing even in our country today? Are you in danger of having believed in vain? Paul wants to prove to us and to the Corinthians that the resurrection is real. They believed what the Old Testament accounts had said. They believed the eyewitness accounts. They saw the changed lives after the resurrection. And it's not only Paul's life that had been changed after Jesus died and rose from the dead. Remember that before uh, Jesus died, his disciples all ran away. 
and they did not identify with him at his moment of need. But after the resurrection, we find them boldly proclaiming Jesus even at the danger, at, even though their, li their own lives were now in danger. They're being thrown in jail and they come out and continue proclaiming the message of Jesus Christ. The power of the resurrection, the power of God had changed their lives and they were willing to die for the message of salvation. And the gospel spread because of this power of the resurrection, because of the power of God in the lives of the believers. The gospel spread and it was true that it, were, it all pointed to a supernatural power that was pushing the gospel. It wasn't the, because the disciples were so bold. It's, it's not because the disciples had such great faith. No, it's because of the grace of God that was a, at work in their lives. This afternoon, I would like to ask you, is your life today, as you, in your place of work, in your home, is it a testimony of the power of, of the gospel? Is it a testimony of the power of the resurrected Christ in your life, the world is watching. What are they seeing when they look at us who proclaim to be Christians? And the same grace of God that Paul talks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 is available to us. We are not only saved by grace, but we live the Christian life by grace. The moment we try to live it in our own power, we fail and fail miserably. That's why people have people maybe that we know who are, who are Christians, and soon they became so confident in their own strength and popularity or the way people love them, that they slowly strayed from God without even knowing that they were straying from God because they had forgotten that it's by grace, the grace of God is the one that sustains them. It reminds me of the story of Samson. After Delilah had cut off his hair, Samson, when she tells him, oh, the Philistines are upon you, Samson got up like he always did, knowing that I'll go out and kill the Philistines. But the Spirit of God had left him. And that's what happens to us when we forget that it's the grace of God that sustains us. When we forget that it's the grace of God that saves us and sustains us to live the Christian life. So every morning, we need the grace of God to help us to live out this life. Every morning, every day. And it's when we know how to depend on the grace of God, when we know how to depend on the word of God, that's when we can be able to live out this Christian life. So I, even as Paul encourages the Corinthians, let us hold family, let us stand, and let us depend on the grace of God to help us walk this journey of faith. <laughs>